Morning, folks. Uh, a bit of Monday motivation for your time. I'm going to quickly talk about um, diet today. Actually, going to take a bit of a skew and actually talk about some practical um, tips on the dieting side. I don't tend to do a lot of this on the videos. The reason being is because I think personally, there's a lot of information out there about seven ways to do this and beat your belly fat with X, Y, and Z, and it's this and that. And I think that's fine, but I think there's too much of that out there at the moment, and it's far too general, and you're not really separating yourself out when you talk about that stuff, really, in terms of what's practical and what can help. So I want to talk about diets today, uh, with hat and gilet, or body warmer, depending on where you are in the country. And um, what I'm going to talk about is some practical tips um, on the dieting side, particularly because recently what's happened is, um, you may have noticed there's a few more uh, TV programs coming on about the best diets and what we're supposed to be eating and all this. Well, there's a couple of things I think to, to, to bear in mind. I think what I want to talk about really is in terms of your food is, uh, it's remembering how much of an intelligent creature that you are. So when somebody says something to you, irrespective of their level of expertise, just give it a bit of thought prior to um, what you do. A good example is something like bread. Now, bread's a classic staple of the diet. You know, we need to eat bread and whatever. But potentially, if you've got a gluten sensitivity, for example, and I do the studies on this and look at it, and look at it from a common sense point of view. If you, you eat something like, say, a flour, a gluten, and you get a, a reaction like knee pain is, is a classic. So knee pain, uh, so joint pain, uh, potentially linked to gluten, potentially, not not directly, but potentially. So knee pain, gluten. Take the gluten out, see if the knee pain gets better, job done. What we tend to do is this, knee pain, um, eating gluten, can't be food, um, go doctors, get tablets, stop exercising because knee pain gets better. And a lot of that is psychosomatic. Actually, we could actually live our lives properly by just looking at the cause rather than the cure and saying, actually, could it potentially be food instead of saying, well, actually, I want to keep eating the bread and suffer the pain uh, and then see if the doctor can fix it. Again, it comes back to common sense. If you're overweight, there's something there nutritionally that's forcing your body to store fat. It's not that you're not exercising, because you, you, why, is your body, why would your body store fat in the first place? I mean, you'd literally have to not be moving and be, you know, to, for your body to store, a, to a certain level, excess fat. So the problem is not, you know, so there's two sides to that. Firstly, it's the, am I suffering from a particular condition that is linked to a food? If it is, is it worth me taking the food out? First one. Second one is... Why am I storing excess fat? Not fat in general, because your body will always store a certain amount of fat, because fat's fuel, it's warmth, it's insulation, it's all these things. So that's what fat's purpose is in the body. It's there for famine, it's there to protect us, it's there to help us survive. Why would you store excess unless you needed to, unless there was something driving that excess fat storage? And potentially people say, oh, it's because we're eating too much. But again, we look at that on a headline level. We don't speak to individuals. We don't say, take a thousand people and say, tell me what you ate today. How many people would you think eat too much food? A lot of people haven't got the time to eat too much food, but why are they still overweight? Um, and it's interesting how then sometimes you get athletes or people who perform at an athletic level, they're running a lot, they're doing certain activities, who are overweight, who are storing excess fat. They're not lean like, say, someone like me, who's probably batting at around 17, 18%, which isn't going to win any bodybuilding contests, but healthy enough perhaps to get me through and get me a fairly long innings. So... The point on diet from a motivational aspect is common sense. If something is hurting you or you're storing excess fat, have a look at the diet that you're on. Ask the question, is it working? Not is it easy, not is it marketable, not is it giving me the chance to do what I want. Is it working? Is it sustainable? Common sense. Not be dogmatic. Don't say my way is the only way because I go no sugar, no flour. For me, the research I've done says they're the most fattening foods. They're the most addictive foods. That's why I prescribe that. I'm not saying that's the only way. I'm not saying that's right. That's what I prescribe. That's what tends to get results with for my clients and who I work with. Might not necessarily work for you. But find something that works, but don't discount the diet as the driver behind 
you know, if you're not losing weight, don't just say, oh, I'm going to go and exercise more. It's quite interesting with the group settings, particularly the classes, that people would go and do, rather go and do an hour-long class where they get beasted than do a shorter class where they get not beasted but told that actually you've got to follow this diet plan. That's the tricky scenario that you get in the sort of fitness industry. People want to train like mad, but they don't want to change eating their favourite foods. And these foods are your favourites for a reason. You know, bread, pasta, sweets, cakes. These are your favourites. They're made that way. You've just got to think common sense. Why am I eating more of this when I'm not? When I technically shouldn't be hungry? So just have a little bit of think, thought about that, um, and use a bit of common sense when it comes to diet and and test and measure things. So that's that for that. Have a good week. Don't forget uh, those of you guys watching you are based in Birmingham. Free seminar, 12th of February in Edge Baston. Again, I'll put the details at the bottom in the description box. If you want to come, drop me a message over at Facebook, um, which is Facebook slash John Hill dot fan page, John Hill dot Inspiring Fitness fan page, or I'll put the link in the bottom for the registration form. You can contact me there. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Have a great week. February, here we come. Cheers.